friends We go to very distant lands We shake the dog and the Hello. world My name is Simone Yach, and I'm going to talk about the importance of building useless things, or at least why it has been very important to me. And I'm going to start with a story from when I was eight years old, and I was this really cheerful kid. And, and I had an idea that I wanted to build a robot, and I felt really strongly for it. But I had no idea how to go on about it. So the way I approached the problem was that I got a block of wood, and I drilled a hole through it. And I put a stick through the hole. And, and the way it was a robot, now you need to brace yourselves, or, or holy hot them, if it is, as we say in Swedish. The way this was a robot was that if you wiggled one end of the stick, the other end would move too. And I was like, it's alive! And, and I know what you're all thinking. You're like, god damn, this girl's a genius. Somebody should throw a ton of money at her. But looking back at my robot as a somewhat grown-up, I realized that obviously it wasn't very great. I mean, I don't think it even qualifies as a robot. But that's one of the biggest differences between building things as a kid and building things as a grown-up. Because when you're building things as a kid, nobody expects you to do useful things. And when I built this robot, most of all, I didn't expect it from myself. So I was really happy with my robot. A few things have obviously changed since I was eight years old. I'm a lot happier nowadays. <laughs> but one thing that hasn't changed is that I still build a lot of things. So I brought my latest invention. Here we have it. It's called the applause machine. And basically what it does is that it lets you clap your hands without having to use your hands. Let's see if it starts. Yeah, so uh, it goes from snarky slow clap. Oh, wow, thank you. Thank no, 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 don't use your hands. This is the modern way of doing it. You need to get your own applause machine. And you can go up, and here you're really excited, and here we have full speed. So, <laughs> so this machine might be really good for people who, who have hands or don't have hands or they don't want to use them. But my next machine that I'm going to show you is great for people who have hands but who don't want to have them anymore. Because I built, oh, here's a video of the applause machine. But I built a chopping machine to help me chop vegetables. <laughs> And as a bonus, this GIF right here is the perfect reply if anybody ever sends you dick pics you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> By some weird miracle, this has become what I do for a living. So I run a YouTube channel uh, where, where I build these projects, and I took this, uh, this, this screenshot, I think two weeks ago, and I was at 104,000 subscribers. Today, I just hit 130,000, so it's growing really fast. And people have even started calling me the queen of shitty robots. <laughs> and, and that brings me to the first reason as to why it's important to build useless things. Because if you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. And this was how it all started for me, because I built these projects only because I thought they were fun. And I started posting them online, and then it turned out that there were other people who found it fun too. And they shared it, and then more people shared it. And suddenly I started getting more comments than I had a chance to reply to. And then all these magazines started writing about it. And then suddenly people like Conan O'Brien were tweeting about my projects. <laughs> This clip has been viewed around 80 million times. That's a crazy amount of people. And there is a chance that I am the person in the entire world that most people have seen getting slapped in the face with a rubber arm. And TV shows started showing them. This is a Japanese TV show that showed my breakfast machine. And what this all comes back to is that if you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. 
And interesting doesn't always mean useful. In my case, it sure didn't. And I understand that, that my example or my journey is probably a little bit extreme, but I think this goes really well for even smaller scale things. Because even if there's only one other person that enjoys the things you do, I think that's enough. Because there's no better way, according to me, to connect with other people. So a lot of people think that I'm an en engineer, but I'm actually not. I am self-taught in both hardware and software. And that brings me to the next next point as to why it's important to build useless, useless things, because the best way to learn how to build things is by building them. And I know you're like, Jay, yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. But seriously, learning by doing is a really important and powerful tool. Unless you're a doctor, then learning by doing is a really bad idea. You're like, OK, I'm just going to cut a little bit here. Are you OK? Let's just try it and see what happens. Or if you're like a pilot, you're like, Shh, Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I have never before lifted an aircraft, but I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a pilot, then learning by doing is a really bad idea. But if you're building things, I would argue that it's the best way to learn. And when you're learning, you shouldn't have to be concerned about building things that are actually useful. And the way I got started with hardware, since I'm self-taught, the way I got started was that I had this idea that I felt really strongly for. And that is how I've kept on learning. Because I've always had ideas first and tools later. So I have this idea that I'm really, really excited about, and then there are just all these things I have to learn along the way to actually build them. And to me, this really makes sense. But if you think about how a lot of the education system is, it's the other way around. It's tools first and ideas later. And sometimes you don't even get to the ideas. And this was how I got started with hardware in the first place, because I had this idea that I felt really strongly for. And the idea was the following. You know websites. Yeah, you know websites. It's not a trick question. You know websites. So, so websites are digital, right? They live in the digital world. So my idea was, what would happen if you built a physical website? And I was like, what does this even mean? But basically what it, it, it came down to was that I wanted to build a website, and this would be like a webcam broadcast of a box. And in this box, there would be these blocks of wood, and they would be attached to motors. And when the user would go online on the website and press these buttons, the block would turn. And at this point, I had done a little bit of front-end development. I, I've made like some very basic websites. But I had no idea how to make the internet talk to physical things. But I remembered, and this is, you know the expression, like, all roads lead to Rome? The internet equivalent of that is that everything on the internet will sooner or later lead to cats. Because what I remember was that I'd seen this cat shelter where you could go online and you could play with the cats. So basically, this was a while I webcam broadcast, the user would press these buttons and they would control these cat toys. And I was like, this is essentially the same thing, right? These two websites. So I contacted the company who had, who had made this, and, and I was like, hey, how did you build it? And they were super snarky when they replied to me. They were like, it's kind of a trade secret, and we're probably the only company in the world who does this. But we've done projects as cheap as $10,000, so I'm sure we can figure something out. And at the time, I was a student, so I was like, eh, thanks. <laughs> OK, but no thanks. But eventually, after a pretty long journey of trying to find a way to build my physical website, I, I found the Arduino community and the open source hardware community. And this is kind of what launched me into what I'm doing today. I'm using these in almost all of the projects I do. And that brings me to the final point as to why it's important to build useless things. Because your ideas might be smarter than you. Good ideas might turn out to be bad, and bad ideas might turn out to be good, but you won't know unless you build them. So it's kind of like that time when I realized that Mona Lisa doesn't have any eyebrows. <laughs> have you ever thought about that? She doesn't have any eyebrows. It's kind of creepy. And, and I thought, yeah, I, I can fix that. And this was obviously a bad idea with a bad outcome. But, but another example is I thought, maybe I can have a robot put on makeup on me. <laughs> and, and this is an OK idea with a pretty bad out outcome. But a more serious example, and, and I love using the word serious whenever I talk about my toothbrush helmet, 
A more serious example is my toothbrush helmet. This was actually the first project I built, the first one I, I posted online, the first one that started going viral. And, and what, what surprised me, because I had a lot of people commenting on it, and, and I only built this as a fun thing, I just thought it would look fun, but I had a lot of people commenting and saying, hey, I understand that this is just a gimmick, but this would actually be really useful for people with mobility issues. And that just blew my mind. Because here I am, I build something that I'm like, meh, whatever, it will look fun. And then people can find small pieces of that, of actual good things. And it can inspire them to build things that actually other people, they could help other people. So your ideas might be smarter than you. So now, in the honor of building useless things, I want to do a brainstorming exercise with you. And it's one of my favorites. It's called the brick. And basically, what I'm going to have you do is write down as many use cases for a brick as you can come up with. So I'm going to give you four minutes. And I want you to take out if you have a computer or a phone or a piece of paper and a pen. I don't know. Does anyone have that nowadays? No, I was kidding. <laughs> and, and I want you to write down as many as you can come up with. And, and don't, I mean, the obvious one is a building block. But what can you do beyond that? Can you, can you use it as a business card for people you really don't like? <laughs> can you use it to give yourself a pedicure, maybe? Just turn off that filter of, OK, this actually needs to be a useful thing, and just try to write down as many ideas as possible, and let's see if somebody gets to um, maybe 40 ideas. 40 ideas of four minutes? OK, so bring out your weapon. I'm going to set the time. Any questions? No? Just... Okay, four minutes starting now. One minute has passed. You have three minutes left. Two minutes have passed, you're halfway through. Try to keep up the same speed.
one minute left. This is when you're starting to get into the good ideas. Thirty seconds left. Fifteen seconds. Try getting one more idea down. And we're done. Cool. So what I want you to do now is I want you to turn to the person next to you, and I want you to read out your last three ideas you wrote down. So your last three to the person next to you. Okay. Does anyone, can, can you give me some of your best ideas? Just shout them out. A what? A batter? A ladder? So you can climb things? That's a very tiny ladder. Just one brick. You're like, ugh. Okay, but more, more, yeah, I, I assume more ladders. A what? Mashed potato with it, yes. Can do that, definitely. A key, ring. a key ring. Yeah, if you want some extra exercise or feel like your backpack isn't heavy enough. <laughs> Somebody over here? Plate or fruit? A plate for food. Yeah, definitely works. A postcard? Yeah, the, the mailman is going to love you. <laughs> wow, thanks. A what? A wet bed? What, what is that? A weapon. Oh. A weapon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, that's probably the biggest use case after building block. Maybe? I don't know. Anyone else? A hot stone and a cold bed. Yeah, warm, but probably pretty uncomfortable otherwise. A headrest in the bath. A headrest in the bath. Legitimate use case. Cool. Cheese grater. Cheese grater, makeup powder. I mean, you see, you can have a lot of ideas just from one brick. So I think I really like that exercise because it kind of pushes you to go from, I mean, you very soon run out of like actually useful ideas. And it pushes you into the realm of fun, weird, useless ideas. So my name is Simone Yach. This is my, my nick on Instagram, Twitter. You can find me on YouTube. I have a Facebook page. And I really want to encourage you to go home and build some useless things because useful things might come out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Jag tänkte på ja, men du får stanna här. Nu vill vi ha lite frågor till dig. Ja. Eh, alltså jag tänkte för du du bygger ju jättehäftiga saker. Men får du inte höra så här, ja men liksom 
Det är ju helt meningslöst. Jo, men jag tycker så här, eller jag får väldigt mycket frågan så här, varför? Varför bygger du de här robotarna? Och jag tycker att det egentligen är ganska lustigt för att på något sätt, så här, jag kan sitta hemma och typ scrolla genom Facebook en hel dag och inte behöva motivera det för mig själv. Det är inte som att man bara, varför sitter jag här och scrollar för, förbi Facebook? Eller jo, ibland på en dålig dag, man bara, varför slösar mitt liv på det här? Men, men, men när man plötsligt ska bygga någonting eller skapa någonting, då är det som att då måste man ha anledning till att göra det. Och för mig, så det, jag tycker inte att det är logiskt. Så att jag, jag tänker att det är bättre att bygga saker än att inte bygga saker. Bättre att bygga saker än att inte bygga saker. Hur kan man applicera det här på sitt företag då till exempel? Om man, man känner att ja, men vi är ett vanligt företag och vi behöver få upp lite kreativitet. Och hur ska man tänka då? Men jag tycker att det är ett jätteviktigt verktyg när det kommer till innovation. Därför att eh, överhuvudtaget när man brainstormar eller gör sådana grejer så är det så viktigt att på något sätt ta bort de liksom, trösklar man har eller de begränsningar man har och liksom kunna öppna upp människor på, på ett annat sätt. Därför att om man känner så här, att man kanske måste kunna försvara sin idé eller att så här, och den här måste faktiskt vara något som vi kan tjäna pengar på, då begränsar man sig. Så att jag tycker att det är bättre att bara ta bort hela den grejen så fort man jobbar i en kreativ process och öppna upp för alla typer av idéer. Och sen så efteråt kan man ju sålla ut och liksom säga att ah, det här kanske inte så här, göra ost på mars liksom, kanske inte är en jättebra idé. Eh, men, men, men i liksom brainstorming-stadiet så tycker jag verkligen att man kan öppna upp för sånt. Mm. Vi ska se, har vi några frågor eller kommentarer på Twitter? En, en fråga vi har haft är att både idag och igår är det flera som har nämnt att det traditionella skolsystemet inte riktigt funkar. Och då är det någon som undrade vad du skulle ge för några råd till unga föräldrar eller till föräldrar med unga barn. Så jag, jag tycker, jag känner så här, jag är inte i en position att säga att säga nej, jag själv inte. Jag gick ett år teknisk fysik på KTH men hoppade av för att jag tyckte att det var lite för, eller jag kände att det inte passade mig riktigt, det var lite för enformigt för mig. Och sen så gick jag på en skola som heter Hyper Island ett år och läste digital datastrategi som var mycket mer reklam. Och jag känner att jag kan inte på något sätt säga att alla hoppar ur skolan. Men däremot så tycker jag att det man kan göra som förälder och, och även som person som vill lära sig är att verkligen lägga vikt vid det man gör vid sidan av skolan och låta det ta tid. Därför att det du lär dig själv och det du faktiskt håller på med spelar också en extremt stor roll. Så att jag tänker att verkligen respektera de hobbyerna man har och se, låta, låta det ta tid, låta det ta pengar om man har utrymme. Och liksom, ja, men på något sätt lägga det och se att det faktiskt är en viktig del av lärprocessen också. Och, och vad kan skolan göra? Skolan. Jag, jag tycker överhuvudtaget, för mig så var det jätteviktigt. Jag har många som ser, frågar hur man kan lära eller liksom inspirera människor att lära sig en programmering. Jag tycker att det är väldigt viktigt, därför att när jag lärde mig programmering, jag drev en startup och, eh, innan jag kunde programmera och blev jättefrustrerad att jag inte kunde bygga den själv. Jag kände mig verkligen som att jag satt i en rullstol och behövde liksom hitta någon som kunde putta mig i riktningen jag pekade. Och sen när jag, när jag, när jag blev liksom introducerad till programmering, då förstod jag redan värdet av det. Eller behovet av det. Och det är samma när jag, när jag hittade Open Source Hardware Community. Att, att då hade, jag hade ju letat efter det här. Det här var ju verktyget jag behövde. Och jag, tycker att det är väldigt, jag vet inte hur man kan göra det i skolan. Liksom. Det är inte som att man kan bara så här kasta ut barnen leran och bara innan, innan man liksom kastar dem en liboj eller fattar... Ja, jag, jag vet inte. Men, men jag tycker att det är en väldigt viktig, intressant grej. För att när du själv har känt behovet och förstår på riktigt varför det här verktyget är relevant för dig, varför det är användbart, så blir du så extremt mycket mer motiverad för att lära dig. Hade vi någon mer fråga? Absolut. Vad, vad skulle du göra med ett tomt glas? Oj, bra fråga. Gud, det här blir någon sån här live... Liksom. Live vad ska du göra med det här? Vad ska du göra med det här? Eh, men jag, jag vet inte, jag gjorde en, en, en lampa av plastskedar här om året. Och gjorde det liksom till som en slags krona där jag bara limmade ihop massa plastskedar. Jag tänker något sånt, liksom. ett, ett plastglas, göra en, en plastglas... Annars typ en alien dräkt. En alien dräkt. Man kan komma undan med mycket mer så här. Man bara, ah, men det är en maskerad dräkt. Då mm. kan man mer eller mindre limma ihop vad som helst. Mm. Mm. Spännande. Jag vet att du har något spännande på gång nu. Framöver. Ja. Ja. Kan inte du berätta? Eller får du inte avslöja? Jag kan tyvärr inte berätta det. Nej, okay, men det kommer komma ut. Jag ska flytta tillbaka till USA. Jag bodde i San Francisco förra året. Jag ska flytta tillbaka dit och jobba med en webb-tv-show där. Men jag kan tyvärr inte berätta vad det är men för det, någonting. Du kan berätta att det är en webb en, en webb tv show En webb tv show ja. som kommer. Det kan jag göra. Ja. Men, men där vi det... kanske får se spännande useless things. Ja, mycket, mycket shitty robots som kommer. 
Eh, men följ mig på Twitter och på Youtube så får ni, kommer ni vara uppdaterade med allt det här som händer. Vi får hålla utkik. Mm. Tack så hemskt mycket. Tack så mycket. Tack så mycket.